jump into. She's been on it more recently than I have. But, um, well, so the way that came about, that was um, an idea, to go in general hospital was an idea that um, arose when I was talking to one of my collaborators, this artist named Carter, and we were planning to do a, we had done a film that I did not title called uh, Race James Franco that was influenced by um, a painting by Rauschenberg called Race to Cooney, where he took it to Cooney drawing erased it. <clears throat> and um, so this was going to be our, an erased performance. Uh, it ended up being not an erased performance, it was like a smudged performance or something. Um, and then we were going to do a follow-up where um, I played a character who was formerly on a soap opera uh, but was fired for mental instability. And um, that's got us talking about, well, what if you actually went on a soap opera. And he's the guy, by the way, that um, helped me come up with the idea for Three's Company and the Drama. So um, um, we started talking about that and it actually sounded really interesting. It sounded like um, as I didn't know what the result would be, but it sounded like it was something that was possible because my manager represented um, Steve Burt, one of the big soap actors. And so we called up General Hospital and said, you know, James wants to go on, is that possible? And they said, they were very excited, and uh, they said, yeah, not only can he come on, if he wants, he can write, you know, in the show, do whatever he wants. And uh, I, I didn't want to um, go on and change anything. I wanted the full soap opera makeover to play the character that they wrote. But what I did tell them is I wanted the character to be an artist, and I wanted him to be crazy. <laughs> and um, they did that, and they gave me uh, you know, an amazing soap opera version of an artist. You know, he kind of hits all the beats, like started as a graffiti artist, and then went into installations, and video art based on murder, and um, in a way, it was kind of all the cliches, but because it was on a soap opera, I thought it was amazing because it's already, it's foregrounding the fact that it's ironic that you don't need to um, take this as a completely serious representation of a contemporary artist. And in that way, it was a great portrait, or it became an art piece in itself. And um, I think it's so hard to capture contemporary artists in a very earnest way on film because the, so much of the power of their art is lost when it's mediated through, you know, the, the, through film. Here is a way to do it because the, the thing became a piece in itself and then it's framed by being on a network show. It was an infiltration. And um, not in a way that I'm trying to make fun of soap operas in any way, but it's just that um, it has this additional frame. So when I went on, I tried to act as well as I could with what they wrote me and, and all of that. Um, but um, because two worlds were put together, and then we, did, we took it one step further and did a special episode at the Museum of Contemporary Art in LA. And so really, it was a, this culture smash, and there were like frames within frames, because it was like a show that had sets there, but they were supposed to be the char my character. By the way, his name Franco. I, that was their idea, but it was like this great kind of thing. Um, so Franco's sculptures are the sets, and then we film on the sets, and then we had museum patrons and soap opera fans come and watch, and they're both watching the same thing, but seeing different things just because of where they're coming from. And, um, and then that we shot an actual episode there, but then I had my own cameras, and we filmed it and made another movie called 
francophrenia, and um, and so it was for me a, a a really I think successful thing um, because like a lot of things that I do, it's it's really hard to define like where where is ground zero there? There's you know it's it's always moving and slipping. 